All right, I'm here with Luis Villasenor. He lives in Mexico City. Um, he's been on a ketogenic diet for, I believe, seven years now. Um, no, actually, it's almost 14. 14 years. All right, yes. that's freaking ridiculous. This guy's been in, in a state of ketosis longer than most people have even known what the word ketosis means. So <laughs> Luis is a moderator on the Reddit Keto Board, the Reddit Keto Gains Board, and the new Reddit Keto Science Board. Um, he lives in Mexico City, and I've got loads of questions for him. His Instagram is, what is it, Darth Luigi? One exactly. Word. Darth yeah. as in Darth Vader? Darth Luigi? Exactly. Um, Luigi the the Sith mushroom eating uh, <laughs> green <laughs> green dressed um, character. So, how's it going, Luis? Fine, thanks. All right, man. Very so, well. First question I wanted to ask you is how did you get involved with the whole Reddit keto board? How did that come about? Well, it goes longer than uh, actually Reddit. Um, maybe you can just tell the story how I stumbled upon keto. And then I'll get into the ready part. But um, I, I've been, I was fat and chubby when I was a kid. You know, the usual was not really like humongous obese, but I was the, the usual fat, uh, fat, chubby kid. You know, the, the one who gets uh, big last for games, not very popular, everything. But I, I was always intrigued by the old school bodybuilders, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and even He-Man, you know? <laughs> so uh, I don't know how, but uh, one day my dad uh, wanted to start to work out and he bought some fitness magazines. So I said, hey, I want to be like these guys. So one new year, I bought myself a pair of dumbbells and, you know, said, uh, I'm going to start working out. And uh, that was something I started doing about when I was 17, eight years. I really don't remember very well was about 1986 and uh, lifting and then uh, in about 2000 I wanted really to step up and uh, get ripped you know like the real bodybuilders and I had dieted and dieted and never uh, got to low body fat levels level so I, I thought it was a secret there was something they, these guys were doing right and I had to do it so I, I don't know how, but I remember I stumbled up on, um, like, and, and, you know, those message boards in bodybuilding.com and the like, <laughs> and I read about uh, people eating just, like, a tuna and oil. So, so I said, well, there, there was something about it, so I thought uh, I could do it, and I, I did it, and I started losing weight, so I said, whoa, this is an horrible way to live in, but it works. <laughs> so, <laughs> so then I, I started researching more books about it. And then I stumbled upon some books, one it, which is called um, The Body Opus by Mario Di Pasquale. And another one called um, The Ketogenic Diet by Lyle, Mac Lyle McDonald. Okay, I'll link to those in, is, the, in the video. Those will be linked below. Yeah, those are like the Bible for keto diet while bodybuilding. So I started reading them, researching them, and then I saw that you can build muscle with keto, with keto, which was uh, sort of what I was doing. Of course, I was doing it wrong, but uh, I started doing the variations and the teachings uh, in, in these books and, and uh, incorporated training laid out by the books on my normal routine, and then uh, I actually liked the diet because it was not like um, you just have to eat uh, protein and uh, and that's it. Because actually what I was doing first, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but I was doing a protein sparing modified fast, which is just eat protein, low uh, uh, fat, and low carb. Oh, wow. Which is uh, the, the worst way you do it. This so is you, what probably felt, you probably felt doing. like crap for that time. Yeah, you, you felt like crap. Uh, you, you are tired all the time and you don't have energy to lift, but yeah, you, you get lean. So what do you it, think, it is, when, when you eat a high protein diet and you keep your fat low, what do you think happens, or you know, do you know anything about the science that happens physiologically um, with well, gluconeogenesis and glucose? Yeah, metabolism? exactly. You are never in, 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 a, in deep ketosis, ketosis because you are not producing enough ketones due to gluconeogenesis. Uh, so, you know, 
Protein is very well for muscle building and all your natural functions, but it is not a very good energy source. Uh, it is not, uh, you know, it, it takes a lot of energy to, to actually metabolize protein as energy. Gluconeogenesis is not a very efficient process, so it should be really just left for your brain. Mm -hmm. Really, it is not, you, you don't, um, sh you should not aim uh, for your protein to be turned into glucose. That is just not like an emergency mode. Yeah. So you probably didn't even know, like you probably were just eating this way because you knew it would get you ripped, but didn't really look too much at the science by, at this point, right? Exactly, and there was no, not, not much science. It was just full of bro science, uh, the, the usual. Yeah. Do this and you will get lean, but then you have to eat carbs again. And it was the usual uh, bulk and cut cycles. No, You have oh, to man. do it for two months, you get ripped, then you get fat again because you you will need muscle and you need energy and you need carbs. It seems like such a it seems like so destructive to your health as well. Just going through all these metabolic um, changes all the time and depriving yourself and never finding like you know it's like you're in between these two metabolisms and never really switching exactly. over completely. That's that's one of the the main things the keto detractors uh, say about keto. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, normal YouTube videos of people saying that keto does not work for long times or that you cannot build muscle with keto, the usual things you sh you are gonna find is that people never adapted to keto. They just did it like for three weeks. Yeah, and you need at least eight to twelve weeks to be really adapted, especially for exercise. Mm -hmm. Because it, it is a given that the first three weeks, the first four weeks, you're going to feel like crap. And yeah. there's really nothing you can do about it, uh, say, uh, of course, eating uh, or ingesting uh, your electrolytes. But you're going to lose strength. That is a given. You just have to keep it up. Yeah. I mean, especially if you come from a high-carb diet and you go straight exactly. into it. I mean, for me, when I, when I switched to ketosis, I just kind of tapered down my carbs and all I was having was milk. Um, was like raw milk, which doesn't really give you a huge um, insulin spike. So I know for me, I felt like after like five days, I felt pretty well adapted. Um, so I mean, maybe that's a way that people can actually adapt more easily is by instead of going from eating junk food to suddenly switching into coconut oil and grass fed butter every day, maybe they should just ease into it. <laughs> yeah, there are two kinds of people from what I've uh, read on keto. There are people that say fuck it and they just jump in the, in the diet and of course they're going to experience the keto, the keto flu and all the yeah. symptoms and there are people who do it gradually. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I don't, I don't know, I think it depends on the person and the lifestyle. Yeah. Maybe there is something that, someone that is training very hard, maybe a slow approach works better. Mm -hmm. But they are going, going to have to reduce their training. That is yeah. a given also. So I, I suggest people that are doing active, that are doing sports actively and they're not competing uh, that do it they are they are going to have a better chance if they do it on their off season. Okay. Yep. Okay, cool. So you you started with this high protein diet and how did you find out about deep ketosis and how did you learn about that? Actually, that was uh, since starting as a moderator already, I've been researching more and more and more about uh, not just ketosis, but more about low carb in general uh -huh. and how the, the metabolism actually works. I did actually the cyclical ketogenic diet. I did it from uh, 2001 to maybe 2005, which is a basic uh, keto diet that most uh, bodybuilders know which is you do five or six seven, uh, days of uh, standard ketogenic diet, and then you do a carb load. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that uh, type of diet, dieting very much because when you carb load, you, you know, most people get a food coma. You get very tired and uh, it's a whole day wasted. Oh yeah, that's horrible. Uh, exactly. And then you also uh, have to do uh, uh, depletion workouts, which interfere with your training. So it's like you have to adapt all over again. Yeah, you have to adapt. Uh, you, you get used to it, but the, the, if you are someone who trains and has a, a very uh, laid out program, the depletion, depletion workouts really interfere with your training. Yeah. You have to do it for one or two days. It's like a um, million of repetitions, so you deplete oh, uh, your muscle glycogen, glycogen yeah. and, and stuff. And this so, is – so I, I was actually listening to uh, John Kiefer and he was talking about his carb night and carb backloading. 
mm-hmm. that's basically what he recommends, and he seems to get really good results. And I don't know. He says that it seems like the way that he's the way he's talking about. It, he says he feels great when he does his carb backloading and uh, the carb night, which is like you know cyclical ketogenic diet with one carb exactly. refeed per week. That's a, that, that's exactly the the same approach I was doing. Yeah. But I found out that I didn't really like the carb loads, uh-huh. so I started spacing more and more my my carb loads. Instead of doing them every week, I started doing every two weeks. And then every three weeks, and then I found out I didn't really need the carbs at all. Uh-huh. I wasn't lowering my strength. I wasn't lowering my um, training. I wasn't lowering anything. Did and, you find and, and, with the carb loads? Because with carb night, what John Kiefer says is he would, after the carb load, it sets off a cascade of hormonal responses. So when you get a big insulin spike from, say, like a high glycemic carb, um, that will actually make you lean out quicker is what he says. Well, Did you find that or no? No, I, I, what I found out with my carb loads was that I was gaining, gaining strength. I, I was not really um, – th- this was at the start of the diet, right? Uh-huh. So I, I wasn't really uh, calculating my macros correctly. So probably I was eating more than I needed. Uh-huh. And I also was doing the carb loads wrong. So what happens if you eat more than you need? Of course, uh, the glycogen goes uh, or spills over from your muscles – and you get you just get a little fatter. That is why a lot of people do carb loads, and then they never lean out. Yeah, you have to play with with uh, the amount of carbs you are ingesting, and I probably I think it, it works, mm-hmm. but it is very um, time consuming. And uh, you know, I was getting better results just by doing the standard ketogenic diet yeah. than with all the macro micro managing of the grams of carbs and everything laid out between. Yeah. So I started and I dropped uh, almost the uh, CKD completely. Yeah. And then I went back to my books and started reading about the targeted ketogenic diet, which is a uh, practice. I'm sorry, you kind of broke out there. Was that a targeted ketogenic yep. diet? I couldn't hear yep. you. Yeah, there are two uh, main keto diets uh, laid out by Lyle McDonald on his keto book. Okay. The traditional one is the CKD, which is a a cyclical ketogenic diet, which is the one with the big carb loads. And the second variation is the TKD, the targeted ketogenic diet. The difference is uh, on TKD, you are practically all the time on keto. You just consume a little carbs around your training. And what kind of carbs does he recommend? Low glycemic, high glycemic? High glycemic and easily digested digested carbs. So what were you using when you started the targeted for well, carbs? I started I started this this variation of the diet about 2011, just uh-huh. at the time I was uh, more in in Reddit and I started it as an experiment. Uh, with myself, I said, "Okay, I'm gonna try this," and because everything I read points uh, toward this being more useful. So I started. Uh, there is a, a brand uh, you can actually buy, buy of MCT oil, which has a little bit of glucose added in, which is called uh, Twin Lab MCT Fuel. So this has just about 15 grams of uh, glucose per two tablespoons, okay. and the rest is uh, uh, MCT oil. So I started taking this uh, as a pre-workout, and uh, well, you can see there. I have uh, some pictures there about uh, two, uh, 2011 and my current, and this is the, the diet I've been on since about three years now, and I've gained a lot of lean mass and I've lost uh, fat mass. I'm I should be right now about nine or seven percent body fat with uh, calculated with calipers. And before the diet, well, before this variation of the diet, about I was about twelve uh, percent. I haven't really changed anything in my training, and I haven't really changed that more that much in my diet. Just take uh, this approach, which I think works uh, better for building muscle because you give your body just uh, like an insulin shot during training, which is uh, probably where it is needed the most. Uh huh. So I mean, a lot of bodybuilders they actually will shoot up. Insulin yeah, before or, their training. Or the, exactly. Yeah. That was one of the reasons uh, I was uh, uh, willing to experiment with this. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Like, I mean, these guys, it, it's amazing what these bodybuilders actually do to their bodies by regulating. All, I mean, almost all the hormones these guys um, in these people's bodies are regulated and 
through synthetic means. I mean, they're exactly. It, I mean, they're taking thyroid hormone. Some of these guys, insulin, human growth hormone, testosterone. I mean, they're like human pharmacies. It's absolutely ridiculous, and they're. I mean, they're ravaging their bodies, but they're mimicking these natural processes that we can actually um, tweak and and hack into ourselves. And you're not going to get huge and look like a freak monster. But as you see, like Luis, he's he's a big guy. How how tall are you right now? Um, I, I'm actually what uh, you call a manlet. <laughs> I'm five foot six. You're five so foot six. Okay, so yeah. what do you weigh? Like one one eighty, one seventy. One hundred and sixty one, one hundred and sixty two. Five six, one hundred and sixty pounds. This guy's big. I mean, five foot six, one hundred and sixty pounds. That's a lot of muscle that he carries around. Um, and it seems like he actually had fun building it and didn't destroy his health. In the meantime, um, if you look at a lot of his pictures, it's hard to see right now because he's in a dark room, but you look at a lot of his pictures. How old are you, Luis? I am 37. All right, Luis just, is 37. Uh, turned 37 uh, last week. Wow. So, I mean, this guy actually, check out his Instagram, the pictures, um, his training pics, where you can actually see he's got super healthy skin. The guy looks like he's in his 20s. Um, you know, I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't look a day over 25. So... Your targeted ketogenic diet that you've been doing, you do 15 grams of glucose about uh, right before you train? Yeah, about 20 and 30 minutes before training. And do you train like in the morning or in the evening? Normally, I wake up. I'm tweaking right now my diet. I'm playing with uh, intermittent fasting. Okay. So there, there are like two variations. Normally, I just wake up, have my usual uh, keto breakfast, which is uh, three eggs, ham, uh, cheese, avocado, some coffee, wait about uh, 20 minutes, and then have my TKD shot, <laughs> and then go go uh, to work out. So maybe 30 minutes before you're actually lifting yeah, weights? Yeah, that's what I usually suggest, 20 to 30 minutes pre uh -huh. So the insulin is probably, is it still high during that point, or does it, has it already gone down? You should be, have the, the insulin a little high. You, you raise your insulin and you, your glucose when you train. Yeah. So um, supposedly, uh, I, I've seen people that just take it like five minutes before, and the insulin kicks uh, right about the middle of their training. And I've had better results taking it about 15, 20 minutes before. Okay. So probably it depends on the person. I don't know, but most people have better results by taking it before. So do you feel a difference when you were when you were doing a standard ketogenic diet um, before you, or the cyclical ketogenic diet, where you would be training? in a state of deep ketosis, um, do you feel different when you take in a little bit of this um, of the glucose before? Well, it is not that I feel different, but I have experienced that I take uh, less time in my routine. Mm -hmm. if, if you are right now on Instagram, you can uh, see some of my recent workouts, which I posted last week. So that's a lot of volume for someone not doing keto. Yeah. For, so, sorry, for someone doing keto, uh, so I think that uh, some people even not on keto cannot do that type of volume. So th this is one of the first things on people that know me, uh, they, they don't believe you can work like this on keto and then I show them my training or, or they see my see me training and they go like, like where are you getting your energy from, where, yeah. from fat? Actually. Wow, so I actually, I haven't even noticed... Since I got into keto maybe about seven weeks ago, um, I haven't noticed that I've had to decrease my training volume at all, actually. I mean, I was doing intermittent fasting before that, so I would always okay. train fasted. Um, and I found my workout volume is probably about the same. Like uh, today, I, I did some uh, bench press, and I did, I did like seven sets of seven, um, which is, I, I don't know if that's considered high volume with what a lot of people are doing. And then I did some closed grip bench press for like, uh, 10 reps and then some dumbbell bench press. Um, but I, I mean, I would guess I would consider it pretty high volume. It was about an hour of intense training. Um, so why do you think people who are in keto are doing less volume? Is it because they're just starting to adapt or is it actually better for you and get better results with less volume? I guess there are two, two things to consider. First, when people start doing keto, they do it for weight loss. So First, they, uh, most people do it wrong at the start. They just consume protein, 
Mm -hmm. stop eating carbs and because they are afraid or, or they believe that fat still makes you fat uh -huh. they don't really eat fat or it'll clog your arteries they think it's bad for your exactly heart. Yeah. even i've seen people that even though they've been doing keto for maybe three or six months they are still afraid of eating fat <laughs> that's crazy yeah I, I know it's like we've been brainwashed and indoctrinated for all our lives and it even happens to me i, I used to shun up avocado because it was just pure fat and now this is a, it's the first thing I, i'll grab on when on a salad bar you know yeah it's funny now i look at avocado i'm like oh man if i eat too many of those that's too many carbs <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly uh -huh. but the thing is uh, like most people that start training with keto first they don't uh, consume enough uh, energy from fat Second, they are um, on a, they're, they're consuming less calories, so they blame the the loss of strength on keto. Well, maybe it's just that they are eating less. Ah, uh, yeah, I definitely have like definitely keep my calories high. I try to eat like I mean I just whenever I eat anything, I just just butter, <laughs> butter, butter, butter yeah. is getting poured no, on. But butter, butter is super useful, and yeah. people like get forget about it like. I get lots of uh, posts on the questions about, hey man, how do you add calories? And say, wait, butter, cheese, and eggs. Right. Like, just, I mean, butter tastes so good on everything. Like, a little bit of salt and butter. Mm -hmm. If you have, like, if you make vegetables, if you steam vegetables, you just take all that hot water and you put like three, four tablespoons of butter in it, and you've got like 40, 50 grams of butter right there. Exactly. Or uh, a super easy way to add about 400 calories to your day is just get like, you know, bulletproof coffee. Yeah. You know, the two spoons of uh, butter, two spoons of uh, coconut oil, and, you know, melt them and pour them on your coffee and drink it. That's 400 calories yeah. in one gulp. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. it doesn't, yeah, there's so many little tricks of ways to get in, in the fats. And um, I don't know, I mean, a lot of times when I eat meals, I'll just eat, like, I'll kind of eat it as a soup base. Like, I'll make, I'll cook up some ground beef and I'll cook it in either butter or, or tallow, which is like the fat from, from the cow. Um, okay. And then... I'll make bone broth. Uh, I don't know if you've ever used bone broth. It's really cool. It's yeah. got like collagen and it's just got all these, um, it's got so much good stuff and it's good for healing your gut and everything. It's super awesome health food. Uh, I'll just heat up some bone broth, throw the meat in there and put some veggies in and just scoop butter, 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 butter. I don't even, I mean, when I live in Ecuador, we don't have a good source of coconut oil here for a reasonable price, but butter, like I get really good grass fed butter. Um, so I don't even use coconut oil. I've never even used MCT oil yet, but you can, I mean, butter is such an easy way to get in those calories and to get in fat. Yeah, exactly. So what about, um, what is your, what is your like daily meal intake? Like, what do your meals look like now? What do you Okay, eat? I'm an, I'm very, uh, like a scheduled person and I'm actually a little boring in regards to eating. So I like. I, I eat almost the same food every day. Uh -huh. So uh, I'll wake up and have three or four eggs, a couple of uh, uh, maybe two or three slices of ham, everything fried in coconut oil and a uh, little cheese on them. And uh, if I have some avocado, that's it. Mm -hmm. Then I'll go and work out. I have some my uh, pre-workout, which is uh, creatine and MCT oil. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I have a supper, I'll have a big salad with some chicken or tuna or uh, salmon. And then for dinner, something uh, very like my lunch, salad or green veggies with some protein. Wow. So what do your macros look like? Like what is your ratio? I'm not even ratio, but how many grams of um, a question that I always am wondering is, how many grams of protein is even needed to actually build muscle? Because I've seen there's so much bullshit out yeah. there. There's so much of this crap bro science where they say you need like two gram, like two to three point five grams per kilogram of body weight, and that's just ridiculous. I I mean I've seen a lot of studies um, that say like you only need something like 0. 0.6 grams per lean pound of body uh, of body mass yes, to build exactly. muscle. So what are you doing well, to build? Most uh, uh, studies, you have to uh, understand that they are funded by marketing companies. Well, not marketing, but protein uh, companies. Yep. So it's, it's just like, you know, the, uh, a shampoo bottle. If you grab a shampoo bottle and read the instructions, it will always say rinse and repeat. You actually have to repeat. <laughs> no. But if it doesn't kill you, well, 
by all means, take another shot, you know? <laughs> yeah. What will happen is that you will uh, use more protein, and more protein than your body needs, well, it does not hurt you, but more, more, uh, but very probably it will just uh, make you fatter if you go overboard on your calories, yeah. right? So uh, actually, part of the, the frequently asked questions in the keto gains and keto science is precis precisely uh, how much protein do you need? And we have a, a, actually a post which I will send you later. But the too long didn't read is that, that you should just uh, aim between 0.8 to 1.2 grams of protein per lean pound you weigh. You don't really need more. So if you're actually, like 160 pounds and you're... 12% body fat. Um, I actually, I just, uh, I shot it by about an 120, 150 max. Yeah, because it doesn't sound like you're like eating that much protein, especially for, I mean, most bodybuilders, they eat ridiculous amount of protein. They're taking whey protein yeah. powder all day. Um, actually, the, the, the studies say that the stronger you are, the, the more muscle you have, you, you need less protein, you know? Mm -hmm. Because you already have your uh, your body, mm -hmm. you just need enough uh, training to maintain and enough uh, food to maintain. That's it. You are not gonna get bigger unless, of course, you're on steroids, right? Right. It so almost seems are, like like a ketogenic diet. It's muscle sparing, right? So it's protein sparing. It's exactly. So you maybe need more, less. I'm almost inclined to believe. I mean, I want to experiment, but it's so it's so hard to know how much muscle you have and how much fat because it like you look different every day and the scale. You know, the scale can stay the same. Like, the scale for me stays the same. It's a broken, exactly. crappy scale in Ecuador. I don't know where. It's made in China. Like, the only ones around. I could go to the hospital maybe and get a good scale and figure out how much I actually weigh. Maybe I should do that. But it's like I'm always 160. No matter what. It's like I'm 5'9", 160. Yeah. When I get into keto, um, six weeks later, I'm still the same weight. And I feel muscle putting on. Like, And I feel myself leaning out. Um, but I'm eating a lot. So I'm not, like, I'm not losing fat rapidly. But... You know, I feel it happening, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious on how little protein one could actually intake and build muscle. I think it's, I think yeah, it's super I, interesting. It, it's amazing, and, and you know, before keto, I was the, the classic guy that used to buy all the supplements, all the fat burners, everything. You know, yeah. I had like, I, I know, I, maybe I'm one of this, uh, the guys that have tried almost all the, sub, all the fat burners pills. Yeah. And because, you know, I was fat, so I wanted to get lean. And before keto, I also wanted to get lean. Yeah. So I bought, you know, hydroxycut, um, rip fuel, uh, you know, you, you say the name and probably I, I took it sometime. Yeah. And then you become like a slave because you think that even though you are not really getting uh, lean from the pills, you think that when you stop taking them, you're going to get fat, you know? Yeah, no, it's it's definitely, it's crazy. And they're, they're marketed to play with people's insecurity and, exactly. and all that. I mean, same with bodybuilding supplements and like sites like bodybuilding.com. It's actually, you know, I mean, most of the information you're going to find on these sites is completely bunk and it's all just put out there to sell crap that you don't exactly. need and probably shouldn't put in your body in the first place. Exactly. And so speaking of supplements, uh, well, I used to take protein apart from my... Um, what I ate, and since reading more and more and more, I said, really, I, I think I don't need uh, much pro protein at all. So I'm gonna get my, all my protein from uh, real food and see what happens. Yeah. And what happened was that I got leaner and I got bigger. Wow, what a surprise. Real food is yeah, better than yeah, real <laughs> crap <food>. powders. Exactly. <laughs> and I, also my, my wallet got fatter. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> And you probably got healthier too because, <laughs> I mean, your, your liver and your, oh, your kidneys yeah. and everything's probably better. <laughs> exactly. You know, the, the only supplement I really suggest people is creatine. Mm -hmm. That's a, a one, the one supplement you, uh, you're going to get results from and more if you are going uh, to start uh, weightlifting. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, really, you don't need anything else. Yeah. Yeah, I've got so many, like, random amino acids that I bought over the years and the only ones that I actually ever find myself using is like acetyl L-carnitine, but that's not even for phys – it's just because of what I've read. It has neuroprotective properties and it's good for your brain, yeah. so I take it for that. Um, and and, and probably if you're eating enough uh, uh, red meat, you're getting more than you actually need. Exactly, exactly. And same with, with creatine even too. I mean if you – 
I don't That's really, yeah, yeah. I don't really take my. I have creatine. I've had a pound of creatine in the same bag for two years, uh, but I don't know how much I need. Every once in a while, I think, oh yeah, I'll take some creatine. But uh, do I feel a difference? No, I don't feel a difference in my training when I take it. I just, okay, you know, it's. I think it's one of those things where if you're eating a whole foods diet and you eat a lot of good food, you're gonna grow. Yeah, you, you don't need it. Yeah, yeah it's like I I played with it. And uh, what I feel is, uh, just like with the, the glucose, uh, I can lift the same amount of weight, but my training and my, my rest periods get shorter. Uh-huh. So, well, if you are you want like a five extra and you can afford it, well, it does not hurt. Yeah. And also creatine is like super cheap in most yeah. Uh, countries. Yeah, it's dirt cheap. And it's so, good. There's so, so many other benefits of creatine too. Like it's actually good for your brain. Um, Exactly. For, for uh, it's got mental um, enhancement, uh, cognitive enhancement capabilities, and uh, I just heard that it's good for your liver too. It actually helps to get fats out of out of the liver. A lot of people have fatty liver, um, which doesn't actually come from eating fats, but nope. yeah, it's a, it, um, it's def definitely a good one. So creatine's pretty much the only one I heard you say in there. You don't even do like a protein powder anymore. No. Cool. Cool. And I mean, you guys look at the, the pictures of this guy. He's got like shoulders the size of my head. Um, <laughs> you know, he's got like boulders on his arms. So, um, awesome. Let's see. Da, 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 da. So, for you've been doing the targeted ketogenic for about what, four years now, you said? I started it around 2011. So, yeah, like a little more than three years now. So you get about 15 grams of carbs in just from your, your pre-workout. You get a little bit of glucose. Um, and how many, other, uh, what are, how many other carb grams of carbs do you think you get in per day? Okay, my micro breakdown is around uh, 120, 150 grams of protein. I'll get about 150, 190 grams of fat. And uh, uh, the rest are carbs, which I take about 25 to 35 net carbs, plus the 15 to 20 from glucose. And what kind of carbs um, are you getting for your net carbs? I aim for your green veggies, you know, avocado, spinach, lettuce, kale, yeah. um, asparagus, mostly green veggies that I consume on, on salads. Cool. Yeah. So when I first when I first got into ketosis, the the keto flu symptoms that I got, um, I think it was the second day, started getting heart palpitations, and I read up on that. And um, well, maybe we can just talk about. I mean, you're so knowledgeable on this. Maybe you could talk about what are the keto flu symptoms and how can people ameliorate these uh, with whole foods, preferably, and then you know, like if they want to take supplements for magnesium and potassium, whatever. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, w one of the the usual uh, things that people experience on ketosis is that people see it as a miracle diet, you know. So they say, "Oh, I just have to eat fat," and then go and eat fat. They don't eat uh, any green vegetables, and they also don't read the guidelines. And it's a, uh, so, uh, for example, in the keto forum in, on Reddit, we have like the one of the first things you should uh, do is read the fact. And prepare accordingly. <laughs> and uh, prepare accordingly means you should uh, watch your electrolyte intake. People just go, forget to drink water, or think they have to drink a lot of water. And uh, you know, I don't know if you've heard the keto flu, but keto flu is uh, when you start the diet, you feel lethargic, you feel a lot of symptoms, and people, uh, it's like a carb withdrawal. Mm. So people get lazy, get uh, uh, headaches, get heart palpitations, get uh, maybe tingling on their fingers. And some and people just symptoms, quit when they feel it. Some yeah, people yeah, say, yeah, oh, this exactly. diet sucks. This they is what eat, it's all about. I, I need carbs. And, and then all the work they've been doing for one or two days, they just throw it out the window. Yeah. <laughs> um, because they're consuming fat, they just correlate their heart palpitations or the tingling in the fingers or whatever with uh, another disease like uh, liver disease, kidney disease heart attack. Now you, I, we've had like every day we have to answer like 10 questions on the forum, forum of people that I'm having heart palpitations. This is due to the fat or I'm having kidney stones. This is due to keto. No, sir. It's because you're not drinking enough water. You never took the time to read how much grams of uh, potassium, uh, salt and uh, magnesium you actually need. 
and you did not prepare accordingly. And once people realize that they are not uh, ingesting salt and, and potassium as much as they need to, and they, they, took, uh, they take uh, corrections on um, those uh, uh, micronutrients, everything starts working again. People also, you know, uh, just as we've been uh, told that fat is bad, we've been told that so, so, uh, salt is also bad. Yeah. So most food nowadays, especially processed food, does not have fat and does not have salt. And, and now when you start the keto diet, you need to increase salt by a lot. You and why is least, that? Is it because your body dumps the, the glycogen and yeah, that holds salt? Yeah, exactly. The, the, the first, uh, when people start keto, they, they experience the magic with weight loss, you know? Maybe people, especially very overweight people, magically drop 10 or maybe 15 pounds in one or two weeks. Mm -hmm. But they don't realize they're not really losing fat, they're just losing water and glycogen weight. Mm -hmm. And when you lose water and when you lose glycogen, your kidneys start dumping salt and potassium. Without and, and it's just like a chain effect. Without salt, you can't really bind potassium. And without potassium, it also takes magnesium. It's like the, the three molecules are chained together. Mm -hmm. So you need three of the three of them together. It's not that you just need salt and you will not ingest potassium. You need the three of them. So the suggested amounts are five milligrams salt at least per day. The five five and five grams. Five right? milligrams milligrams. Well, oh, sorry, five uh, thousand. Let's say five grams uh -huh. of salt. So five thousand milligrams or five grams. That I think that's like so, two teaspoons maybe of salt when you measure it. Exactly, and also people should not uh, really like take two teas teaspoons and drink them with water. <laughs> right, you're just gonna get the crap. Yeah, so, 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 I've heard people do that and then... If you do eat, that, you will course. get the shits. You will poop for hours. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's better that you sprinkle salt on everything you eat or uh, maybe, like you said, have some broth mm -hmm. or bouillon, you know, uh, just buy some... Um, uh, I don't know how, what the actual name in English, I think it's bouillon. Bu bouillon, yeah. Exactly. Just get maybe two cubes yeah. and, uh, or, or drink it like tea. That's what I suggest people start their diet. Yeah. Before yeah. before you, you sleep or in the morning when you wake up, drink like a cup of bouillon and probably you're going to get all the, the sodium you need for the day and of course keep ingesting salt you know, with all your food. The second uh, okay. most important if you start getting cramps or health palpitations or maybe tingling fingers is uh, probably due to uh, low potassium. And this is easily solved with uh, ingesting all the green stuff you see, you know, uh, drink and uh, eat an avocado a day or lots of uh, spinach, broccoli, um, everything that is green and fibrous has a lot of potassium yeah. and also magnesium. So if you ingest green veggies, you're probably all set. I'm going to go close the window right here. I've got somebody drilling. Yeah, of okay, cool. So what I found after about two weeks, uh, my salt intake just started lessening. Is it something that at the beginning of the induction of keto, you might need more salt and then as you are more adapted, you require less or is it just, yeah. am I just imagining that? That is definitely a, a thing. Uh, as, as you get more keto adapted, uh, your body starts to regulate uh, all its uh, needs. So at the, uh, like a good advice is at the start of the diet, just go uh, and take the at least the suggested amounts, which uh, we just talked about, and then you can maybe wing it. Mm -hmm. But if you start feeling again very tired, it's probably uh, due to lack of uh, salt. If you feel palpitations or if you feel cramps, it's probably due to lack of uh, potassium. So just ingest more. That's it. Nice. It's really simple. Yeah, it's, it's quite simple and uh, that is something you're going to have to live with. It, it, it's a given. I've been, uh, even though I've been like almost 40 years, I all, uh, I sometimes get the flu, or I sometimes uh, get tingly fingers. And this is also, uh, you have to learn that if you're weightlifting or doing sports, you're going to need a lot more cell than 5 grams a day because you're going to sweat it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and also an, another advice is, yes, you need a lot of water. How much? It depends on you. If you feel thirsty, drink water. But if you drink more water, you're also going to need to increase your electrolytes. Interesting. Yeah, more water and with no electrolytes just makes it worse because you're dehydrating yourself more. You're going to go to the bathroom more 
and you're, you're going to keep piecing uh, the salt, you know? Yeah. So, okay. So when you're, um, when you talk about electrolytes, you're getting it from leafy greens, how much leafy green matter? Like how much spinach or kale or broccoli can somebody eat? I mean, a lot of people are worried like if they eat like a few bites of broccoli, it's I'm just going to out of ketosis because there's so many carbs. No, but, um, no, no. I mean, there's like, so much fiber that... Yeah. N nowadays, we, we have the, the magical thing called Google. And you just input uh, calories, broccoli, and you get uh, like, I don't know, a hundred uh, hits on how much calories a broccoli <laughs> has. And it says like, I don't know, I, I can really... Look it right now. Yeah. Um, so I mean, you're, you're, we're talking about is. net. We're talking about net carbs. So that's like exactly. the carbs minus the fiber. And for yeah, that, most of these leafy greens, it's either zero. It's like zero grams or one gram per pound for some of them. So I mean, I mean, you can eat so much leafy green. You can actually exactly. a lot of people who are in ketosis you eat more greens than most vegans do. Um, yeah, actually, if you look at what I eat, or so, like if I don't tell you what I'm doing, you're just gonna see a person eating lots of uh, salads and meat, mm. or uh, and and I don't even eat that much meat at, at all, you know. Like I've been with uh with my last girlfriend, and we were like three months uh, together, and she didn't know what I was doing. She never suspected. <laughs> So, so it's not that uh, hard. It's not like you're. Uh, it's not like you have to become like a social hermit because of how you eat. No, Everywhere no, you no. go, that's, you can find also, fat and protein <laughs> and greens. Yeah, exactly. That, that's also another misconception people have. For example, t talking about broccoli, where we were talking, 100 grams of broccoli has seven uh, carbs, and almost three of them are fiber. So you're just uh, getting four grams of uh, carbs from broccoli. So that's if you eat a whole pound of broccoli. Which nobody yeah, exactly. can really do. Most people can't eat a pound of broccoli. If you eat a pound of broccoli, exactly. they're still going to be in ketosis, and you could probably have more later on. You have to, you have to eat maybe like I don't know, uh, like yeah, one pound, and that will be like twenty gra grams of carbs. Yeah. And then you have to uh, take fiber in account. Yeah, it's like don't worry about it. Yeah, it's not going to spike your insulin or anything. You should be good. Also, yeah, as you said, uh, those are low glycemic. Uh, sources of carbs, so why even bother? Okay, cool. So, da, 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 da. so for the average person, and, and, and another thing that you know, um, now that you said about social reasons, what I love about keto, uh, in contrast to, to when I was doing a low fat diet, is that when I, you can go actually to any restaurant and, and find something to eat and something like good tasting. Mm -hmm. In contrast to if you were doing a low-fat diet, you just have uh, like some salad with lemon and a uh, plain chicken. Well, stand keto, I can eat maybe a beef, uh, fish, uh, cheese, uh, the, the the fatty salad, not the lean salad or the light salad. Mm -hmm. You know, you can eat almost everything. Even if you go to a sushi bar, you can have sashimi or you know, uh, teppanyaki, whatever. Yeah, I mean, if you're on like cyclical keto ketogenic diet too, you can every week or so go to the sushi yeah, bar and eat so. a bunch of white that's rice, right. and you'd be fine. And also, you can drink. Yeah. So, yeah, the alcohol really does not uh, interfere by that much. I, I'm a social drinker. I go two or um, one times a, a week with my friends and, and girlfriend, and yeah, I, I do get drunk every once in a while, and really does not uh, interfere with my uh, weight loss. So you're probably not drinking uh, beer or anything. You probably drink no. alcohol. Yeah, exactly. Just like uh, gin, tonic, uh, vodka, yeah. whiskey, and uh, wine. Yeah, a couple, a couple of uh, glasses of wine would oh. hurt you. So wine doesn't interfere. Interesting. Yeah, really it's because uh, alcohol should not be counted as carbs. Mm -hmm. White yeah, wine just... probably – white wine might be a little sugary and – yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. You I mean, know, you shouldn't uh, drink that anyways if you don't want a headache the next day. So. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the one thing uh, to take into account is uh, alcohol and keto is uh, it makes uh, headaches worse. Ah, so you may be more sensitive to the alcohol. Yeah, you are more sensitive to alcohol. When you are on a normal diet, maybe you, you can drink, I don't know, six uh, glasses of wine. <laughs> on keto, with two, you have had more than enough. Wow. 
I want, do you know why that is? It has to do with uh, uh, because you don't have. I don't remember, so I'm gonna not call it bro science. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna look it up, but it has to do with electrolytes, and uh, because your liver is with ketones. But uh, don't take my word for it. I'll okay. look it up and send it to you later. Okay, interesting. Yeah. All right. So let's see. We've got some other questions here that people asked from Facebook. Uh, Maria Kakanda asked if there's any particular types of carbs that work best in TKD. You already kind of touched on this, um, that would have less of an interruption on ketosis. So you already talked about this MCT oil that has glucose. Are there any other types of carbs that you find work good pre-workout? Um, yeah, what, what you want is uh, high glycemic and easily digested carbs. A very good example is uh, if you're living in the United States, you can buy sweethearts. <laughs> Yeah, really. Mm -hmm. I, I've done keto with sweethearts, like maybe have, uh, I don't know, five or six uh, pieces, and that's uh -huh. it. Or runs, nerds, those yeah. work very well. Or you can make what we call the Keto Gains Coffee, which is a variation of the Bulletproof Coffee, and you just add uh, caro syrup to it. Mm -hmm. You know that caro maple sy syrup? Okay. You just have to, to look for the zero high fructose one. Yeah, you want, because the fructose um, doesn't spike insulin. Yeah. No, fructose, uh, and actually what fruit, uh, fructose does is uh, stop ketosis. You're going to be out of ketosis for a while when you work out. Mm -hmm. So that you, you should not really worry about it. You'll be back in an hour or two. But uh, the purpose of uh, TKD is uh, twofold. First is to increase insulin, which is a muscle building hormone. Mm -hmm. And the second one is to replenish a little of your uh, glycogen. See, if you consume fruits or uh, anything that, it, that has high fructose, it's just going to refill your liver, your liver uh, glycogen, which, uh, as you know, just interrupts ketosis. Okay, cool. So you already talked about what you eat on average day. That's another question that somebody wanted to know. Okay. Um, um, and so before you, got, before you got into keto and before you started playing around with the high-protein type diet, what were you doing? What kind of foods were you, were you eating? Well, I was, I don't know, um, normal. Uh, and, you know, in Mexico, we have a very similar diet to the United States. Yeah. yeah maybe just uh, eat more, uh, you know, tortillas and uh, beans. But aside from that, it's mostly the same. So high, pretty Especially, much like a high-carb diet. Yeah. You know, Mexico City is like, like a, any city in the United States. You have McDonald's. You have the same chain restaurants. So it was really not that different. Yeah. The only thing I did when I started weightlifting before keto and before a high protein diet is, you know, do it to bodybuilding magazines, just uh, get the whey shakes. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, bro, you need more protein. <laughs> and, and those are also full of all kinds of sugars and stuff too, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so what kind of advice would you give to somebody who's just starting out on a ketogenic diet, probably doing it for weight loss? Um, it seems like a lot of a lot of like women are are doing it. Your your video is flickering in and out. Do you? Is yeah, I, I don't know what is happening, but okay, I'm I'm getting a bad uh, feed. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Just maybe the video. There it goes. Now it's maybe it was the wire. Okay, so. Yeah, what, would you, what kind of advice would you give somebody who's just starting out on a ketogenic diet, like a female, maybe not so used to resistance training, and they're just mm -hmm. doing it for weight loss? Okay. First, uh, you have to understand that you don't have to exercise. Exercise is a bonus. If you want to and have the energy, of course, do some kind of exercise, but it is not required. So, okay, let's take exercise out of the question. The first thing uh, you should do is uh, read um, about the diet and uh, prepare accordingly. Like uh, I said before, read what will happen and the, some of the effects and symptoms you're gonna experience and uh, get uh, your potassium, sodium, and magnesium. So that you that, don't that, have to end up going on Reddit and asking him why your heart's <laughs> racing and why you got insomnia and <laughs> why exactly. your toes tingle. <laughs> no, especially so people don't freak out because yeah. they're, they're going to get a heart, heart palpitations and they are going to correlate it with eating fat and eating uh, eggs and they're going to drop the diet on a second. And yeah. then they're going to ask maybe a doctor, which is not uh, very informed on the diet. 
and the doctor is going to say the usual, that it has high cholesterol and they're going to die. <laughs> yeah. Even though there are a lot of doctors that are now using a ketogenic diet and they recognize the, the therapeutic benefit for cancer, all kinds of diseases, uh, neuro, neurodegenerative diseases. Um, there's so many diseases that can be treated with keto and including heart disease and heart problems that actually saturated fat is not what causes that. But, um, Especially those, yeah. Okay. So re returning to, to the advice is first research in a, in a, in a well-documented place. I would suggest keep the, the keto forum on, on Reddit or uh, some of the forums here on Facebook. Uh, also, always look up the, the science behind them because a lot of people, if you read the, the forums on uh, Facebook, they say, I heard, I read, a friend of mine. And those uh, advices, maybe, uh, although they are uh, good-hearted, they're just uh, like people talking. Yeah. And then, then, then you have like 10 or 20 different forums, and they are all saying different things. Yeah. No? So, so uh, I think the, the best advice is, is to buy a book, a well-known and researched book, and use it as a, like a Bible. And if you, if you see and really uh, look up the science, you're going to find the same things over and over. There's like no one has uh, his version of the diet. The diet works precisely for one uh, thing. And the first thing is because it helps you regulate your hormones. Keto is no, not magic. Calories will still count to a point. So people cannot expect to be eating more than they need and magically lose weight. That's, that is also another myth. Mm -hmm. You are going to have to eat at around or below your, your uh, total daily expenditure. But what happens with keto is that keto helps you with uh, your hormones and with hunger. So you actually end up uh, eating less. Yeah. Or eating just what you need. Cool. All right. So let's move on. Let's talk about training a little bit. You, okay. post, you post your training regimen. Um, would you use like an app or something that, uh, that shows you this, uh, I'm looking at your Instagram right now. Mm -hmm. And so how is your, how is your training changed when you get into keto and you maybe talk about, um, some of the changes you've gone through in your training and in your goals for fitness. And, um, I mean, you're obviously, you're into natural bodybuilding. Uh, so yeah, can you go ahead and talk about your, your training and what you're, what you're doing now and what you've done in the past? Okay, well, back when I started training, I used to concentrate more on machines. And over time, as I learned more, I, I changed for barbells and dumbbells. And really, I, I don't use machines anymore. Um, I learned that you have to first build your frame with the basic lifts. And then if you need to or want more hypertrophy, you can use machines, mm. and which is uh, actually the reverse of what most people uh, end up doing. If you go to a gym and you, you will see most people using machines instead of uh, concentrating on free weights. So those so basic that is that you're uh, one thing about. that I've changed since 2009. Mm -hmm. Sorry? I'm sorry, the basic lifts that you're talking about, what are those basic lifts? The, the classics, uh, overhead press, bench press, uh, deadlift, squat, and rows. Okay. So, I mean, I see you still mostly focus on, on these lifts. Um, exactly. Have you, been a, have you built a lot of strength on your um, while in ketosis? Well, of course. Uh, uh, right now, my squat should be about 380. I've maxed out at 425. But, you know, that was like a, a one time about two months ago. I really haven't tried, uh, tried it again. Right now, I can do 305 without issues on a squat. On bench, also my max should be about 385. Wow. Uh, overhead press, I have, I've done it at, at 185. So, and that's why, while in ketosis. Last year, I wasn't doing them uh, that, he that heavy. So last year, you're doing more volume? I was doing more volume. And uh, I started, in, you know, uh, I have uh, laid out a program in, the, in Keto Gains that is based on uh, uh, strong list five uh, times five. Mm 
uh -huh. which is one of the most known uh, programs for novices. So I try to incorporate that in my normal uh, lifting program, and yeah, it has helped me a lot. Cool. So how many days a week do you train? Okay, I, I do a five-day split. So I train... Uh, I, this is like, I've been lifting for almost 18 years now, so this is more for maintenance and increasing uh, my strength. This is something I really not recommend to someone just starting. When someone is starting, it, uh, the person needs more rest. You don't have to do this much volume. Mm -hmm. I used to do it because I have time and because I, I like it, but it's really, it is not necessary. Okay. So people should not be doing what I'm doing. And you're, they're not going to get the, the same results. They're not... They're, they're just gonna get burned out. Mm -hmm. So uh, I train five days a week. I train Monday, I usually do leg day, uh, Tuesday uh, arms, Wednesday shoulders, then uh, back, and then uh, chest. And uh, Saturday and Sunday, I try to rest, or maybe I go with, uh, with my girlfriend who is also starting weight training and train her. Cool. So if you guys check out his Instagram, you'll see like the high volume stuff that he does. I mean, how long does your workout take? Like this last one that you posted, that seems like it probably it took takes, like at least an hour and a half to do. Yeah, it takes about a 90 minutes, between 60 to 90 minutes. You should, yeah. you should take that. So you take short breaks. You're not taking very long breaks in between your sets. No. The, actually, what I do is, uh, it's called, uh, I, it's like circuit training. Mm -hmm. I pair two exercises. I normally do between five and six exercises. So the rest from one muscle group, I do another set with another muscle group. Mm -hmm. I usually do a big compound lift followed by a, um, another lift that is not very, um, you know, I don't know um, the exact name. Sorry for my bad English. But uh, for example, today um, I did arms. So I do one bicep exercise followed by one tricep exercise. So you do so one I'm not set really on working the... the same. Exactly. I, I'm not really working the same exact muscles. While yeah. I'm working one, I'm resting the other. So this allows allows me to uh, do more reps and more sets. So kind of like antagonistic muscle groups. Exactly. Okay. Cool. So you do five days a week, and when you first for somebody who's first starting out in ketosis, maybe been lifting for like I don't know a year or two, like beginner to intermediate lifting um do you think they'll have to change their training much when they first start out and what kind of advice would you give to somebody who's trying to lean out most people who get into keto are probably trying to lose body fat so exactly. and they probably enjoy training and they don't want to try they don't want to lower their volume too much so what kind of advice would you give to uh, an intermediate or novice starting keto okay if the if they have a very late out program which is working, they, just, they should just maybe reduce a little bit the weight and a, a little bit more volume. Probably mo most people do a 3 times 5 or a 5 times 5. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can do a 3 times 8. Yeah. With maybe 10 or 15% less uh, weight. Or they can keep up, keep up with uh, their current training. It's like really up to them. It's how, <laughs> how they feel yeah. and how much calories they're, they're ingesting. Also is... Um, Maybe they they have not a very good uh, program. Most people just make their program based on what they wanna, the muscles they want to grow big, without really uh, thinking how the muscles work and how they work in relation to each other. You know, they just use uh, their muscle, uh, the, the mirror muscles. They just wanna grow big biceps and yeah. uh, they wanna grow um, abs, but they don't care about their legs and they don't care about their shoulders or back. Yeah, no, it's crazy. It's like you see people in gym and, and they're just that, doing they're yeah. doing sit ups. Like they'll grab like weight and they'll use they'll do sit ups with weight and they think that's gonna give them abs, and then they'll do like barbell exactly. curls. Yeah. Well, people don't believe me, but really, I, I don't do much uh, ab exercises at all. My yeah. abs are the results of squatting and deadlifting. Yeah. Yeah, a lot um, of people say that. A lot of people, I mean, yeah. deadlifting and squatting that's gonna get your core super strong. Exactly, oh. they're gonna. That's, that is gonna make your abs pop out. Really. I mean, you've obviously I, developed. You've obviously developed your arms. I mean, you got pictures on your Instagram. You got really freaking big arms. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, me like I, I don't really work. I never like work my biceps. Like I'll do like rows sometimes, but I'm like I gotta start doing that because I, I mean, 
like, you gotta you gotta like be well rounded, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Like I don't really isolate my triceps or my biceps much. I just focus. I like to deadlift. I like to squat and I like to bench press. I guess I do more like type powerlifting type type workouts, and I usually like I'll do so much exertion in those exercises that I, I mean like when I'm done deadlifting, I'm not gonna be bent over rowing because I can barely bend over when I'm done with exactly. my deadlift sets. So uh, maybe I should maybe I'll start doing some more of the accessory exercises as well and balance <laughs> it out. But uh, cool. So we're already we're already at an hour and had so many cool questions in and this guy's very knowledgeable. You could check out his Instagram at uh, Instagram.com slash Darth Luigi. D A R T H L U I G G I. Um I'll put a link down below. And where else can people find you? Um where, any closing statements or last words? <laughs> you can uh, look me up in Reddit every day. I, I try to answer all the questions I get. Or you can uh, send me a di uh, direct message there or maybe on Facebook in any of the keto groups. And I'll try my best to, to answer as fast as I can. Um, probably on Facebook it, it will be a little slower because, you know, if you send a direct message, sometimes it does not show so evidently. Mm -hmm. But uh, you you can certainly send me a message and read it and read it. Sorry. So, what do you think the best keto resource online or keto group online for people who are curious about it or just getting into it? There's a lot of Facebook groups, and I see there's a, like a lot of bickering on it, and a lot of uh, people who maybe don't know what they're talking about giving advice. Um, where do you think people yeah, should go like, if they're like looking said, for advice and if they're looking for stuff on online? Definitely on Reddit, and it is, it is not uh, because I mod there. It is really because you're gonna get sound and uh, resources. I really like to back up what I say and my claims, and I will. Uh, if I don't know, I will take the time to look it up. I have some. Uh, I know already some uh, good people that have written uh, very good uh, books. About not just about keto, but about metabolism and uh, low carb diets. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I've uh, gotten in touch with uh, William Lagacos, uh, which has uh, written a very well researched book, which I recommend to everyone, which is called uh, The Poor Misunderstood Calorie. And it goes uh, in, in uh, depth on how metabolism works and why a low, low carb diet works. So it, it is not pro keto, but it is not against keto either. It's just like science. So what we try on, on Reddit is support everything with science, and you will get the links and evidence, pro or against. Keto is not the the best diet. It may work for some people. It may work it, not very well for others, but it works. So um, I'll just uh, the, the advice I'm gonna give is. Be always skeptical and try to find sources that support or contradict. Awesome. Awesome. I'll put the links to the keto Reddit boards, uh, the three keto Reddit boards that he actually mods on. And I don't think he makes any money from doing this. He just does it because he likes to help people out. Exactly. Um, yeah. So what do you do? What do you actually do for a living? What is your job? You said you're at work right now and you've got the door in your office <laughs> closed so nobody bugs you. What do you do? Exactly. Uh, I work at a restaurant. Actually, so Ooh. I manage a restaurant and do the marketing and back office and uh, uh, some meal preps. And we actually have uh, uh, it's a Spanish restaurant, so we it's a very keto friendly. Actually, you know, Spanish food is a Mediterranean diet and it's filled with fat. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm I'm actually work right now and I have to close it, so people don't come into the office every second like they used to. <laughs> All right, cool. So he's right on the front okay. lines of, uh, of keto in a restaurant serving high-fat foods and uh, exactly. serving you guys on Reddit and looking like a freaking gorilla <laughs> on <laughs> Instagram. Um, all right, man. Thanks a lot, Luis. I will uh, I'll put some links below. And this was a lot of fun. I hope to do it again sometime. Yeah, whatever. Whenever you need it, Tristan. Right, Thanks, me. Thanks for everything and nice meeting you. All right.